I'm really happy for you. I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. For 400 years, that sounds like a choice. I love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. From this, George Bush doesn't care about black people. To this, spontaneously shocking our world's programming has been a marquee staple of Kanye West's brand. From lashing out on Kid Cudi, Kris Jenner, Pete Davidson, and many others to promoting his presidential campaign over and over again, Kanye has done everything between his long list of tweets and out of the ordinary public moments to shock, challenge, and divide audiences. Whether you commend Kanye for speaking freely in a society where everyone is expected to think the same, or you despise him for his erratic, unpredictable, and often harmful behavior, history has shown that no matter what girl he embarrasses or what hat is on his head, Ye's actions have always been forgiven given or at least accepted in the public eye mainly due to his unmatched contributions to the world of music, fashion, and because of his overall importance to pop culture as a whole. Throughout the past few weeks, Kanye's unhinged tirades have reached a new low with him rocking a White Lives Matter t-shirt, posting text messages of him threatening people like P. Diddy, calling for DEFCON 3 towards Jewish people, and he even leaked his own kid's school address which caused Kim Kardashian to hire additional security. While in the past, the culture has continued to embrace Kanye, his most recent actions may be the final straw for the majority of people to cut any connection they have left with the acclaimed artist for, and rightfully so. Kanye's recent actions are filled with so much hate, and they're putting dangerous thoughts into the world. The point he's making isn't just tainting his image, but it's backtracking on the progress our human society has made as a whole. There's no need for actions like this from one of the most influential people in pop culture. While in the past, it seemed like no matter how far Kanye's went, he's always been able to climb back out and receive love and embracement from the rest of the culture, this may be the time Kanye won't be able to reverse the damage he's done. Multiple people and outlets see the danger in Ye, which has caused him in getting banned from Instagram and Facebook, and also Twitter, whose largest shareholder is his friend and superfan, Elon Musk. Between these big companies and other pop culture icons like LeBron James deciding to pull his episode of The Shop from releasing, as in the words of LeBron's agent friend and the show's co-host, Maverick Carter, he was using the show to reiterate more hate speech. With Kanye not having much luck in finding a stadium that can host a listening party for his Don to 2 album so far, it looks like at least until Ye can change his manic behaviorism and apologize or at least stop pushing forward all of the hateful statements, he will truly be blackballed from the industry. At this point, the only companies willing to give Kanye a voice are news outlets, and when looking at this, these companies just want to exploit Ye's breakdown for views and attention. They don't care about him or what he has to say. When speaking about platforms that are still willing to feature Ye, we must mention Drink Champs who just released an almost four hour long interview with Kanye on Sunday, October 16th. Now, if there was any hope for Ye, this interview really threw it all out the window as it showed his disgusting nature and true colors. Hate, confusion, misinformation, and jealousy are the clear motives for almost everything that came out of Kanye's mouth in this interview, and between his poorly presented ideas and disrespectful comments, it shows how unprepared and unknowledgeable he is on a lot of the topics he's preaching about. From the constant anti-Semitic comments to the way he kept talking about all of his hatred for people coming out of pure jealousy, Ye's words just came off so childish, and all my respect for him as a person went out the drain when hearing this. Here you have one of the most successful men of the 21st century, and he's talking about how he's jealous of Drake and Virgil Abloh's victories, and to make things even worse, Ye switched up on them as they became more successful than him, and it's just ridiculous that a grown man who had arguably the most beautiful woman on the planet by his side and four entire kids is ruining his friendships with people who loved and respected him. Jealousy is one of the worst traits you can ever possess and to ruin relationships because of this is just a whole nother low. Looking at this in the music world, it feels as fans of Kanye, we were betrayed considering that he talks about beefing with Drake around the Donda era just to market and hype up the album. He had everybody fighting for him and for what? When it comes down to it, 
he manipulated his fans into buying into narratives that were anti-Drake, and this is really just pathetic as he did it to sell some damn records and none of it was true. It was all just out of pure hatred. I mean, it's sad because Kanye is marketing an album that's about his deceased mother, family, and religion through his pure hatred and jealousy for somebody. It just adds such a dark tone to things and it's truly sickening to think about. For somebody who calls themselves a Christian, it's not very Christian-like to say so many hateful things and to show so many traits of jealousy. The Tenth Commandment literally states not to covet or be jealous of your neighbors. He's disrespecting his own set of rules and moving past his religion Targeting an entire group of people based off a stereotype is something that nobody should even think of. It's a simple matter of respect for basic human rights, and somebody as wealthy and powerful as Ye should never say things like this. It shouldn't even be a thought in his head. Even Kanye's comments about his mother throughout this interview were super off-putting. At one point, he asked Nori and DJ FN who they think his favorite person of all time is, and when they answered with his mom, Ye responded saying it was himself, and I guess this isn't the worst thing he said at this point, but between the way he just dismissed his mother from this point in the conversation, along with other comments he made when talking about what went down between his mother and his father growing up and figuring out where and how they were going to raise him, there was a tone when Kanye was speaking about Donna that just didn't seem like it was coming from the same Kanye West we've known in the past. Even the same Kanye West who released an album about her just a little bit over a year ago. As fans of Ye's music, watching him sabotage his entire image, it's truly heartbreaking and really sickening due to the connection he has provided with us through his art and spirit over the years. I mean, one of the biggest advocates of renouncing things like homophobia and hip hop and stigmas around mental health is now building back up the same walls against other groups. Looking at this entire Kanye situation, my other observation about everything going on is that when Kanye goes through these episodes, he becomes both out of touch with reality and also himself, where he just says and does whatever spews out of his mind and does not question or give any of his ideas second thought or further examination. I mean, you know it's bad when frickin' Donald Trump says Kanye is crazy and needs help. Another thing I have noticed with Ye is that his weakness as a person is exploited by people who want to gain something from him and only he ever realizes this until he's messed up and he realizes that the damage has been done. I mean, you can really look at this all the way back from his Rockefeller days, and you can look at it all the way to rolling with Candace Owens now. Kanye's relations through our public eye always show him choosing the wrong people. He thinks everyone has his best interests when they reach out to him, while realistically, they just want to profit off what he brings to the table. From Adidas to The Gap to Candace Owens, it always seems that Kanye doesn't recognize the motives of what he's getting himself into until it's too late. This way of thinking continually causes Kanye this cycle of destruction and this rapid behavior as he's always feeling betrayed. In saying all of this, don't get me wrong, the point is not to victimize Kanye West, but it's to learn and understand how one of the most beloved and inspiring figures in pop culture has turned into one of the most hated men on the planet. Looking at this entire disgraceful situation, what I would say that we should take away from all of this is to think. Think before we speak, think before we act, and most importantly, think about who we associate with as trusting in the wrong people can destroy your character the same way it has to Kanye West. Fantastic Hip Hop, signing out. Have a great day.